I mean, like the simple, simple way to say it is like, the idea is basically it's like a comic con meets a Ted talk right. um, or, right. and kind of smashing those together yeah. um, while doing all the normal comic con stuff. We're going to be wearing costumes. There's all the fun vendors. All right, party goers, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network, betonline.ag, Sailfish Comics with three locations in North Carolina. That's Sailfish with two S's. Be sure to check out their website. We have a very, very special episode coming for you today. Getting ready to bring the first ever Beer City Comic Con to the great city of Asheville, North Carolina, one of my favorite cities I have Johnny Shields on the show today. Johnny, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, Brian, man. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to get into it. How are you doing? I should ask. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm here with you now. You know, just a little backstory. We've had to do some rescheduling, uh, primarily on my part. It's been a crazy summer. I'm, I'm glad that kids are going back to school. Things are getting kind of cool, situated. Man. So uh, yep. it's, it, it's, it's a good life right now, especially with parents. Yeah. I know that are getting ready to just force their kids onto the school bus right now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, today is today's first day of school for, for my kids. So okay. uh, yeah, today has been my first productive day of work in several months. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, yeah. Have some space. Very, very cool. Well, actually just to, you know, to give uh, our listeners and watchers here a little bit of a backstory. I, I saw a couple ads for beer city comic con, I believe on social media, immediately reached out to Johnny. You know, a lot of you guys that have been with us and been following us. We try to support all things, North Carolina. Um, you know, even though I've been here for 26, 27 years now, I've only been to Asheville once, but that's definitely going to change. Yeah. I know. Yeah, better. <laughs> so you're missing started, out, dude. <laughs> exactly. I know. I'm I'm very very deprived. I had to stop going to my new my usual spots and continue to go back to Asheville. So it was my wife and I's first trip to Asheville. Well, not her first trip. My first trip to Asheville last year. Absolutely fell in love with the city. Yeah. I mean, cannot say enough about it. So for those of you that are not in North Carolina and you want somewhere to go that's just incredibly cool yet unique and weird at the same time. I think yeah. that's the best way to represent it. You know, it's Asheville. I, I love it here. <laughs> Obviously, like, I, I just think it's incredibly beautiful and fun. And, and the vibe is, like, it's a very funky, you know, kind of town that we're all about letting our freak flag fly. Yeah. Um, and just very welcoming and open to anybody, whatever stripes you want to wear. Um, so, anyway, which is why, like, I think it's a, you know, it's a shame that we haven't had a, a really, you know, larger scale comic-con um in yeah. several years so yeah. yeah yeah what was the premise behind beer city comic-con which is coming up uh, for those of you who don't know september 29th through october 1st so be sure to mark yep. on your calendars but you know i'd love to know your backstory on Asheville and just how the idea started flowing about beer city comic-con yeah yeah so um my relationship with Asheville goes back a little ways i, I moved here officially five years ago, almost six years ago now. Um, but I have a longstanding relationship with Asheville because uh, I went to Furman University, which is in Greenville, South Carolina, which is an hour south of Asheville. Okay. Um, and so I started coming up to Asheville pretty regularly when I started dating my wife. Well, she wasn't my wife then. She's my wife now. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> but when we started dating, we'd come up to Asheville because like all the reasons I say, it's a terribly romantic, beautiful, awesome city. So we'd go for a hike. And then go downtown. We have great restaurants and bars. Um, so I'm from Nashville, okay. Tennessee. <laughs> um, and so we lived in Nashville for a long time. And uh, But it was always number two in our list. Like, all right, if we didn't live in Nashville, we live in Asheville. Like, Asheville, I mean, Nashville is kind of outgrowing us. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, let's let's make the Asheville move. Yeah. Um, and, and we did just kind of like out of the blue. And like, we'll find jobs. We'll figure out what's going on when we get there. Um and we haven't looked back, and it's been great. We are so happy with the decision and, um, and just love it here in Asheville. So, awesome. yeah, that's kind of what brought me here. 
Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. So, you know, in, in terms of Beer City Comic Con, you know, what was the real motivation behind it? And, uh, you know, obviously, if you want to give any shout outs throughout the episode and, you know, feel free to curse if you want to. If you don't want to, it's all good. Uh, oh, but, you thanks know, fucking God, God, man. Um, <laughs> I've just been holding it in these past few minutes. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Get it out of the way there, brother. I love it. There we yeah, go. you know, um, I'd love to, you know, just kind of like learn the process about it. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like it's kind of a uh, so um, it's going to jump around a lot it's a it's a weird story that involves a lot of my background and multiple different stages so i'm going to start with when i got the idea to do this con and then and then it connects to like my childhood and shit so it's going to be an involved story love it um (laughs) so uh so i mean i guess the first thing was like you know as soon as i moved here getting around to the different comic book shops in town um and one of the first things i noticed was like we have like four i think five now really great comic shops like whereas i was coming from nashville which is a much bigger town and yeah. all growing up we ever had one consistent uh, you know we only had one consistent comic shop and then i came to Asheville and like and it was like oh my god we have so many great comic shops that, was, that are and you know and allison and morgan and scott and the guys that like i mean like I, like i know all the owners and they're great people yeah. well-run businesses aesthetically beautiful shops which is also something i've never been used to my comic uh-huh. shops all growing up were all just pretty ratty and dingy you know <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. um but they had the goods that's what that's what matters but yeah. like um but this is such a smaller city than Asheville or some of these uh, than nashville or some of these other you know cities i've been to and where you expect to have a, a thriving comic book community you know um and so that kind of like hit me you know just like huh there's got to be something special about Asheville that we can support this yeah. many, you know, good comic shops. Um, and then like, and then, I, and then I started looking into it like, Oh, well, when, when our comic con is, you know, like, and, and now we do have a couple of comic cons that have been around for a while. So like, and um, one is the WNC comic con takes place at the ag center, uh, which is a little bit out of town. Um, technically it's in Mills river, but but like, but I was looking for one, like, where's the one that's like downtown Asheville? So, so another thing that people, if you don't know about Asheville, like, like I kind of touched on earlier, it's a very welcoming um, community that's, you know, for everybody, no matter what your thing is, they're, you're, you're celebrated for expressing yourself in Asheville, right? Yeah. Um, which, of course, as all of us Comic-Con knowers, that's what Comic-Con, you know, Comic-Cons are known for. That's the that's community, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and so that was another thing. It was like, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it just fits a Comic-Con like crazy. Like, why isn't there like a big one that's like right in the heart of downtown and really like doing it? Um, I've worked in event production for over 10 years. Okay. Um, based out of Nashville and, a, and several different events, mainly in, in craft beer um, related events, so beer festivals, brewers conferences, beer and food pairing events and, and all sorts of different things like that. Um, concerts, all, all sorts of stuff. But so I think part of it is just like my, my mind works in an event production kind of things. Like, you know, like, well, I see the community is here. You know, obviously the market's here because we have all these things. <laughs> Where's this missing piece, you know, like, uh, and, and so like, and then like, and, you know, so me and my family go to different cons around and, and there's a couple we'd gone to uh, nearby and, and I, and there's like, I remember going in and it was some of these smaller level cons, which we have a few of around here, which again, are a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember going in, my wife was like, wow, there are so many people here. And like, you know, and you can tell like the, 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 the production, you know, value, like not value expense, we'll say, isn't the highest, right? Like right. Um, still produces what it needs and it's a great experience for everybody. And then we're leaving. And we're walking and she kind of brings it up again. Man, there's so many people here. And then she's like, you know, you could do this better. Like, because she's been to a million of my events before, yeah. you know, like, and she knows that's the way I think and, yeah. and everything like that. And, and I was like, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. She's like, oh, not maybe, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, so that, that was really kind of getting like feeling like I was getting her vote of confidence, you know, and I'd only just kind of mention it not in a way that like i'm thinking about doing this just like i'm surprised we don't have one you mm-hmm. know downtown um and and so like her saying that like rose like 
all right, well, now the gears are starting to turn, you know, like, uh, and so it's just started thinking it through and everything and looked into it. And, um, and we did have a good comic con that was here in downtown a few years ago, um, called the Asheville comics expo. Okay. I wasn't here at the time, but, um, but from all accounts it was a really, you know, great event, but unfortunately had to, um, closed down due to whatever reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then like my first thing was like, all right, well now I'm thinking about doing this. And so my first thing was, well, let me go to the different comic shop owners and kind of run the idea by them, you know, just kind of like, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? Would you support me if I did, you know, would you be a consultant for me and help me out? Like, yeah. um, and getting connected and all that kind of stuff. And so it just started going around to the different shops and talking to, you know, Morgan and Allison, like Morgan from Morgan's Comics, Allison from Comic Envy. Um, and both of them were super supportive. So after a while, I got there like, yeah, we think it's a good idea. We think you could do it. We, we will support you in any way we can, you know, moving toward that. Um, so now we're really cooking with gas, you know? <laughs> so like, like, all right, well, then let's really do this. And then so from an event production standpoint, like my first thought was like, okay, how are we differentiating ourselves? How is this going to be a different con than other cons? And how are we making it unique to the city of Asheville? Um, And that's always something that I've approached all my events with is, you know, this should be a place based event. It should it should be a celebration of the local community. Um, and should benefit the local community in as many ways as we possibly can fit in. So we're going to, we're going to, we're jumping way back to Uh like, I was 10 years old. So 1992 Mm. is when, when we're jumping back to. And so this is little Johnny. He's been in school for a few years. And, um, and what little Johnny did not know is that Johnny is dyslexic. Um, And so this was undiagnosed at the time I was diagnosed about five years ago when my younger son was diagnosed um, and I started reading up on it, you know, and I was like, Oh shit, this is me. And this explains so much, you know? Um, and for those who don't know, dyslexia is a way your brain works. So it has a really hard time processing uh, the written language in particular. Right. Um, and so like learning to read and write is like extremely, extremely difficult. Um, and usually dyslexic folks have a hard time with it for their whole life. And there's, there's other things involved, in it, of course, but that's the very simplistic um, version of it. So having undiagnosed uh, dyslexia meant nobody knows what's going and uh, like no one knew what was going on with me. And back then it just wasn't on people's radar. So it's no teacher's fault or anything. Like they just didn't know to look for it. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially one of the hard things about dyslexia is that like the, you know, dyslexics often tend to present pretty bright, you know, like, like smart people, but then they just suck at school. And so what usually they assume is like, Oh, you're just lazy, you know, like, and so that's, what I got, like Johnny's lazy. He's just not trying. Right. Um, where I was like, well, no, I'm, I'm really actually trying really hard. Yeah. And so what ended up happening, like me and a lot of other dyslexics, and I said, fuck school. Um, <laughs> and because it was just like, I can't do this. I don't know why I'm trying, but I can't. Um, and so at a pretty early age, I just said, forget school. Uh, I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to try to get by. Uh, just enough that I don't get in too much trouble with my parents or the school, you know, which I still got in a lot of trouble in, but with both. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and like, and, and by association, learning, reading, everything sucks. Like I don't, I'm not interested in any of that shit. Yeah. Um, but what changed all that was when I was 10 years old, I was going to a friend's house to spend the night. We stopped at a Piggly Wiggly with his dad and his dad saw me looking at one of those little tourney racks of comics. And, uh, and he was like, well, hey, man, pick one out. I'll get one for you. Yeah. And it was like, that changed it all. You yeah. know, like, so uh, it was Detective Comics 448, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I have it around here somewhere. But, um, but it, it, like, but, you know, so that just opened my world up to comic books, which, for obvious reasons, are ex- extremely extremely like um approachable to people with learning differences you know like um percent yeah yeah which of course they've still to this day haven't gotten the appropriate credit for um uh, yeah. but for me so i was i was able to find a medium that like oh i can get into this story right um so a bunch of things happen one i can get into this so i you know and i 
got wrapped into it right away and yeah. fucking loved it. Two, it forces me to work on my reading, even yeah. though I hate work on my reading, but I care enough about the character and the story that I'm willing to do the hard work. Right. Of basically teaching myself to read through yeah. reading comic books. Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was obviously huge. Like, so I just, I'm reading comic books all the time and slowly over years and years and years, I develop into a, you know, a fluid reader. Mm -hmm. Possibly more importantly, uh, what comic books did for me at, at that thing was at that time was exposing me to a lot of bigger ideas that I wouldn't be exposed to in school at that time. Um, and, and, and so like in comic books, cause you're, you're dealing with like interesting character dilemmas, ethical dilemmas, you know, like psychological issues, you know, uh, different just philosophizing about the different concepts and ideas. You're getting into quantum physics and some different things about multiverses and space travel and all this kind of stuff, you know, like, right. and it's all, it's, you know, it's sci-fi, you know, but it all gets you a little bit of actual science and then expounds upon it as all good sci-fi does. Like, um, but it exposed me to these ideas that got my brain really turning. And then I started reading other books because now, oh, a normal book doesn't sound so intimidating as right. it used to, you know, um, and now I'm fascinated with some of these ideas around psychology and physics and, and philosophy and stuff. So I can start picking up books and reading about those things. Yeah. And just got, and, and really figured out like, oh man, I love this. And actually I don't hate learning. I like learning a lot. <laughs> you know, like this is great. Um, and so and this all here. We, so there we go. Bringing us back uh, to, <laughs> to the comic con. No, all is, good, honestly, I really appreciate that story too, because to be honest with you, as I've started doing this podcast, I've ran into so many people that I know personally, not to cut you off and I apologize, mm. but that have been dyslexic no, and have told me similar stories too. Like yep. there was comic books and graphic novels that, help them realize like look I, I know this can be frustrating but it's something like this that has helped me proceed with other aspects of my life so i'm really really Absolutely. glad that we were able to share that story seriously yeah yeah and that's the cool thing about it too is like as i as i've shared it with other people it's so yeah. often especially comic book people like it's yeah. so often that they're like oh yeah Totally. Like I have dyslexia or I have another like processing issue that made yeah. learning reading really hard and comic books are how I learned how to read, you know, like a lot of people, <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so that all ties, that backstory ties in to the unique aspect that I wanted to bring to the Comic-Con, um, which is incorporating uh, basically like science, psychology, physics, um, astrophysics, neurology, you know, like all these different things into the con. So basically like right. bringing in the science geekdom to share in the sci-fi geekdom and, you know, right. comic books and all that sort of thing. You know, one, because like I'm a geek about all that shit, you know, <laughs> so yeah. I was like, well, that's, I want to be a place where I can get all those in one, you yeah. know, um, and, uh, and it provides, it just, like I said, it provides something unique that as far to my knowledge, nobody else uh, has done something at least in this way um and so the way that that looks is so we're bringing in like like i said philosophers psychologists um physicists all these different people mm -hmm. to sit on our on our panels with our comic book creators um to do kind of deep dives into the science psychology whatever behind these characters and storylines or just have other little like kind of interesting geeky talks and lectures and yeah. um, things like that. I mean, like the simple, simple way to say it is like, the idea is basically it's like a Comic-Con meets a Ted talk right. um, or, right. and kind of smashing those together yeah. um, while doing all the normal Comic-Con stuff. We're going to be yeah. wearing costumes. There's all the fun vendors. There's, you know, all the stuff of just having a great time. And again, like one of those things of, of representing what comic books did to me is like advancing my, you know, education and inspiration, being inspired by it while having a great fucking time, you know, <laughs> like exactly. it's not like, you know, uh, and, and, and so it's, it's me kind of wanting to honor everything that comic books did for me and show what comic books can do to those people who have, who haven't seen it firsthand or, or, or whatever. Um, and then just like, 
to, and, and to kind of get those worlds crossing over a little bit more, like so the yeah. scientists and, and the, so like basically like having a, a, a whole bunch of like really, really knowledgeable people yeah. and a whole bunch of really, really creative people yeah. in the same room together having conversations. And I'm kind of like, well, who knows, man? One day we might like discover some shit and like solve problems that we never would have figured out on our own, you know, but we had these in the same room together, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that like that was like the big spin uh, on like the, the normal idea of a, of a Comic Con. And then, of course, like the Beer City name is just you know, harkening back to like the, the culture of Asheville. And we're, you know, always one of the top cities in the nation for most breweries per capita. Um, and I love my, my brewers and stuff. I, and I, I just love the art form of, of brewing beer. It's, it's such a cool, similar kind of thing where it's art and science mixed together. You yeah. have to be both to be a great brewer. Um, so yeah, and it's just fun. We're going to have some delicious, uh, you know, delicious beers at the Comic-Con and hearing interesting talks and, you know, stuff like that. So, like, why not? I, I love, uh, love, love that concept. Like, going back to our first original conversation I always thought it was a great idea because, I mean, even with, with comic books and whether if it's comic books or your favorite TV show or movie or whatever, there's always, you know, for the most part, there's for the most part, there's there's a science behind it. And the fact that oh, you yeah. go and, like, be able to just discuss things, even if, even if we're not going to be able to figure out how, like, we can officially make a flux capacitor, there's still a, there's still <laughs> a very cool conversation to be had on how that could be possible. And yeah, exactly. And things to be learned and yeah. pathways that you wouldn't have discovered otherwise. You don't might not take the path all the way to the flux capacitor, but right. you do go down this other one that makes you, you know, at the very least for guys like us who actually aren't Doc Browns, you know, who are going <laughs> and going, actually going to create this shit. Like, right. but it can like create an interesting thought, you know, process yeah. or, or something that's like makes you look at the life and time a little bit differently as the Back to the Future did, movies did for all of us. Um, you know, it's like, well, that just added value to my life, just having that discussion, you know, yeah. like, um, and yeah, and, and that's, that's what I'm all about. Like, and I just think like, it'll just be a lot of fun, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Like, I, I hate that I'm missing this year because of Toy Fair. This is, this is my, my last trip to Toy Fair. So that's the main reason I'm going to Toy Fair. So, um, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, you know, I'm going to see if I can get some, hopefully some representation from the podcast <laughs> down there. Either way, um, you know, September 29th, October 1st, as far as you know, you know, lineups and things like that, like how is for, you know, A, you know, where can people get information from to get tickets? Uh, yeah. you know, I don't know if you guys have a, a, like a hotel sponsor yet, stuff like that, especially, you know, most importantly, as much as I love this state and everybody in the state, my, my main goal when I started the podcast was shining a light on this state for people that have never been to North Carolina. So Absolutely. for those that are not in North Carolina, you know, what, what would be the best way for them to approach like where to reach out in terms of like best places to stay? Should they Airbnb? Like you guys have the information yep. on your website, you know what I mean? Like feel free to go ahead and let people know whether in the state or outside of the state, what are some good options as far as room and board? And then what, what the general kind of schedule looks like for right now? Sure. Um, yeah, so, so to get all the information, it's just our website, beercitycomiccon.com. And it was one of the things I set out from the get-go is like a lot of Comic-Cons do not have good websites. So I, like, I was like, we are going to have a good, attractive, logical, reasonable website where you can find the information you need. Um, and I do, I do think like our, our marketing company, uh, Kudzu Brands, I'm going to give a shout out to them because they're awesome and did a great job with it. Um, so, so there, there's where you can get like, you know, you can get our lineup of guests and all that sort of thing. Uh, we do have, you go to the travel section, we do have some hotels we partner with that are offering discounted uh, rooms for attendees. Um, and there's links right on the website. So you can go straight, straight from there. Uh, I would say like, just if you're listening, book those now. Yeah. Like um, this is a beautiful, beautiful time of year in Asheville. Yeah. And a lot of people know it. Uh, so a lot of people come during this time of year. Um, we call it leaf season here because um, it's our big tourist season when everybody comes in to see all the leaves changing colors. Yeah. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, like the weather is just perfect. So, uh, so definitely book those right away. On the website, you'll see like there'll, there'll be some um, hotels listed that say downtown. There'll be others that, you know, kind of say other parts of town. The downtown hotels are walking distance to the venue. Okay. Um, like easy, like a quarter mile, like it's like super easy. 
Um, and another warning, uh, Asheville is not known for its great parking situation. So <laughs> right. definitely, if you can, park at your hotel, yeah. leave your car there. We've tried to make it so you can walk everywhere you need to go. Like, so like just because it's going to be a much bigger pain in the ass. And you're going to probably have to walk longer if you try to park somewhere else, like downtown. It's just walking from your hotel. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's all on there. And then we are, our panels should be up maybe next week. So we're finalizing um, all the panel schedule right now. What we do have up right now is for our, and I haven't talked about this yet, but like for our, we're calling it Beer City Con X. Yeah. Um, so it's a separate event that's happening on Friday the 29th. So actually the full con isn't happening on, on September 29th. It's right. just Con X. And then some other associated satellite parties and events and things. Mm -hmm. um, but the Con X event is really like a TEDx meets Comic Con. So it's, it's, it's just like a TED conference, like yeah. short form lecture series with comic book creators and, um, and scientists and social activists and, and different things like that. Right. sharing their wisdom and insights with us, um, which I think will be a lot of fun. I'm ta I'm speaking at it too, just kind of giving the story of the, of the con and, yeah. and, and, you know, the idea of, of trying to educate and inspire people yeah. with the comic con and get people in the same room, sharing interesting ideas. Maybe we can make some solutions to save this planet, you know, like, which is what all heroes are trying to do. So, um, that's that's the that's the grand like shooting yeah. for the stars you know idea if we just come come together and have a great time mission accomplished i'm happy with that too you know so uh hey, yeah it's all, wrong, all good yeah there's nothing wrong with having a great time and also educating yourself too because to me yeah. personally like you know I, I like to have a good time don't get me wrong but when i'm learning shit on top of that i'm having a phenomenal time and I think yeah, that's how yeah. most people should feel. And I and I, I love that that that's a representation like representation of this uh, you know, Comic Con. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, like you have it labeled as world's smartest Comic Con, and I can see why now, because I like the yeah. combination of like TED Talks and then the combination mm -hmm. of, you know, more just getting to know people around the area. So I mean it's it's not yeah. just a, a Comic Con, like, yes, you can still come dressed and, and do whatever you want, but if you also yeah, please do. learn a lot of stuff this is your Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah, totally.